Okay, Rabotai. We have been doing book reviews of different Chachamim from our library, from our Sephardic library. And one of the books that I was very excited to receive was one that I was waiting for a while was the Shelo to Chuvot from Rabbi Baruch Toledano. There's many Bar- Rabbi Baruch Toledano. This is the one that most people know lived, a, lived, a, lived in the previous generation. Rabbi uh, Rafael Baruch Toledano, who was an Avbedin in Meknes. He wrote the Kitsu Shulchan Aruch that a lot of people use, as well as the, um, as, as well as the inspiration to the very... Uh, he wrote the song Ashore uh, Shira, uh, Lichvod Torah. And uh, he, was, he was a tremendous personality. I once gave a whole shi'ur on his personality. I think you could find that on Torah anytime, uh, on, the, on the life. He's been in Israel, no? He's been, he, he lived at the end of his life in B'nai Brak. He, and that's where he... I was studying by Yeah, and that's... Uh, um, uh, Moshe by uh, Rav Moshe Marka, and he used to come to teach us for, uh, with the music. Right, like right. The music. And, he's, and he, he had a tremendous, tremendous um, burning... Burning uh, uh, way of 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 his avodat Hashem, and he was cool of fire. He was cool of fire. At the end of his life, he, he lived in Bnei Brak. and these are the teshuvot that are put out from the from the avat shalom. And I will highlight some of the important maseu uh, diunim that there were in regards to this subject. And the first one is he is uh, about six letters. That have to do with chazarat ashats, what the minhag, uh, whether one should do chazarat ashats in tefillah or not, and he starts off with one of his ancestors teshuvot, teshuvot, which is of the shamayim chadashim, Rabbi Moshe Toledano, uh, a few hundred years ago in Simantet or Achaim that writes that that the minhag is not to do chazarat ashats based on uh, a few very early sources that since people do not have kavana nowadays and if you don't have 10 people to do kavana so therefore uh, there is a serious problems of bracha levatala therefore one should not do chazarat ashats and because of this shamayim chadashim and other poskim the minhag in many places in morocco was indeed not to do chazarat ashats besides Besides very specific tefillot, besides that most of the time Chazarat Ashatz was not done. On here, Rabbi Rafael Baruch Tuledano says that uh, that he doesn't understand that nowadays he thinks that the the minhag changed, and he he quotes already that in Morocco he saw that most places did do Chazarat Ashatz, and uh, and and he says that. You have many advantages of doing the Chazara. Besides the fact that there is an Inyan Alpi Kabbalah, there's also, uh, there's also the fact that you're able to answer Amen on, 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 uh, on doing, uh, on, 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 on doing Chazara Tashatz. And he brings that Rabbi Moshe Toledano said that even though the Minhag was not to do Chazara, he says, Bismanenu ze, I'm reading verbatim. Bismanenu ze, lo ra'inu minhag ze, ki im bemincha she'am terudim mitpalel. The only time where we saw that people would skip Chazarat Ashatz is during mincha, that people are very rushed. V'chen ra'iti b'ro'agim b'rov ha'ri me'arav, heper ma she'katav rav mechaber. And here Rabbi Baruch Taludano is, is, is testifying that in most places in Morocco we saw that people do Chazarat Ashatz, not like Rabbi Moshe Toledano. Now it's known there are certain cities that did not do it, and that's where they, they kept stickler on the original minhag, but it seemed to be at some point it did change. And now Rabbi Baruch Taladun is getting into a halachic discussion why he thinks that it's justified that it should change. Number one, he says, the reason why he thinks that it should change is that nowadays people do have more kavana. People listen. It could be that in those times people were talking more, but... People the, the, the pray with kavana. Number two, according to the Mikubalim, there's a big reason to say it. And number three, even according to the Rambam, that he said that people are usually talking, but nowadays most people answer Amen. He says, ah, you're worried that maybe you're not going to have 10 people who are answering Amen. He says, Rabbi Baruch, I have a solution. And my solution is something called a tefillat nedava. 
that when the sh- a shaliyah tzibur is concerned that maybe you don't have 10 people listening, he can make a condition and say, in case there aren't people who are, uh, in case there aren't 10 people that are listening, my tefillah should be a tefillah of offering, a tefillah nidava. And that way he covers all the bases. This is where it's going to get a little technical and he's going to have a discussion with other Chachamim and this is actually very interesting to see. So usually in the book review, I review a lot of Teshuvot. I'm not going to have time. I'm only going to focus on this subject because it's it's just, just fascinating. So number one, he says that from the fact that some people say, that that, uh, uh, that that they might not be listening, so you can make a condition of tefillat nidava. Now, what does this condition of tefillat nidava mean? It means that your tefillat should be of offering. But there are some rules to making a tefillat nidava. The number one rule is that tefillat nidava can only be done when there is a chidush in the tefillah, when there is something, an extra aspect, an extra dimension that there wasn't in the previous tefillah. That's the only time where you're able to do a tefillat nidava. And here the Bibaru says, what's the extra dimension? The extra dimension is that you're afraid you weren't Yotzeh. That's the Chidush. You don't have to add on anything in the actual Tefillah because the actual fact that you're doing it to be Yotzeh is the Chidush. Ah, you're going to tell me on Shabbat and Yom Tov we don't do Tefillat Nedava because you can't bring a Korban Nedava on Shabbat and therefore you can't do Tefillat Nedava. So here he proves that it's actually a Machloket and he brings from the Bet Yosef that the Bet Yosef seems to imply that, that, the, that there's a, it's a machloket between the, the Rif and the Rambam and Geonim, whether you're, you're allowed to do Tefillat Nidava on Shabbat. And he, and he, th- he thinks that only the Chathila you shouldn't do Tefillat Nidava. But really, with the Avad, when you have a need, you could do Tefillat Nidava on Shabbat. Ah, you're going to tell me you can't bring a Korban Nidava on Shabbat. So the, the Bet Yosef brings the, achar, the, acharonim that say, the, the Rishonim that say like this. You're right, you can't bring a Korban Nidava on Shabbat because it's Chilul Shabbat. If it's not an obligation, you're shechting and you're doing other Melachot for no purpose. But Tefillah and Chilul Ba Tefillah. You're bringing, so it's not exactly like a, like you're bringing a korban. It's tefillah, and you're not being mechalil Shabbat by doing a tefillah. And even though he brings some geonim, and therefore in the Shulchan Aruch, he actually seems to imply it's better not to say it. But that's he proves from the Bet Yosef. It's only the chachil, not the avad. Here he quotes. And he says, he, he sent these, these words out, Tarabi Shlomo Akohen from Mazaga, the Lecha Shlomo, which I gave a shiur on his writings, the Sefer Lecha Shlomo, fascinating Sefer, Rabbi Shlomo Akohen. And Rabbi Shlomo Akohen answers him back. Rabbi Shlomo Akohen agrees with Rabbi Rafael Baruch Lulidano. And he says, I don't understand who, me who, I'm going to read his language. Me who ze'asher yidibrot lehavod kotsho yarhib nafsho oz levate lechazara. Who dares uh, in, in, in go against kedusha and 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 will will be mivatel chazara chalila chalila ishtakadavar veinoyemar. God forbid, one should never mention that such a thing. And if in the Rambam in Mitzrayim they did that, such a thing, that's fine, but not over here. He and 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 not only that. All the more so if we have an opportunity to restore and bring back the Chazana, even the Rambam would be happy. It could be in his time, he had a difficult time saying this, but nowadays, in our time, we definitely should say this. And I agree with your reason that Alpi Kabbalah is important, and I agree that you could say Tefillat Nidava, that you can make a Kaddish Tefillat Nidava in case people are not listening. So there's no problem whatsoever. So Lecha Shinomo agrees with Rabbi Baruch. Then you have Rabbi Yoshua Maman. Rabbi Yoshua Maman was. A Dayan, the one of the last Dayanim that, that we that we had in our generation from this period in Morocco. I had a I I had a I was Zochit to have a Kesher with him. He gave me a skam on my books. He lived in the in the neighborhood of Mekor Baruch, the end of his life. And here, as in his younger years, he responds to these Teshuvat. He takes on these two giants and he says, I don't agree. I think we have to keep the minhag of not doing Chazara. And he has two 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 reasons. Number one is that there, you don't have 10 people always answering. That's number one. And, and I'll get to your nidava in a moment, he says. But before I get to your nidava solution in a moment, I want to tell you that in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Bet Yosef, he seems to imply that the only way that you could, that you could uh, be Yotze Chazrat Ashatz, if people are listening, actually understand what the Shaliyah Tzibur is saying. And he's saying, this is what's missing nowadays. People do not listen to the Chazara, and not only that, they don't understand what the Chazan is saying. And it says they don't understand what the Chazan is saying, there's no safek anymore. It's for sure, and Nidava is when you were Yotze, 
Just you have a suffix and that's why you're doing it. Over there's not even a suffix. So he says there's, there, you don't even have a solution of Nidava and therefore, uh, and therefore we should keep the original custom of not doing Chazara. Here he gets rebutted back from Rabbi Mordechai Amar. Rabbi Mordechai Amar was a great posek in the city of, uh, of, 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 of Meknes. He was, uh, he was, he was, um, he was, um, uh, you know, he used to be the Chavrut of Rabbi Tzchaka Sabag, the Rav of Rabbi Shalom Misas. I heard from Rabbi Mordechai Amar, son Rabbi Avram Amar, that they didn't, they didn't even know how many times they finished Shaz Be'iyun together. That's how many times they did Shaz Be'iyun. <laughs> There's a great posek over there, and he didn't, uh, didn't like to assume rabbinic positions. He wanted to learn all day. And, and he writes over here, he write, reads back that of Yeshua Maman, I don't understand what you're saying. He writes him short in a, in a short way. I don't understand what you're saying, that, you're, that, that, that for sure you're not Yotze. Of course you're Yotze, and you have a reason to say Nidava, and you should say Tvidan Nidava, and I agree that we should say Chazara. Yeshua Maman answers him back, and he says, not that way. And, and they go back and forth, and it, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. That doesn't go anywhere. So it seems to be that Rabbi Yeshua Maman really took on all these, all these Chachamim and he says it, it, there should be no reason to be not Nidava. And the other Chachamim come along and say there is a reason for the Nidava. And the truth is nowadays it sounds like the Chachamim are right. Most people listen to Chazarat Ashatz. They say Amen to Chazarat Ashatz. There's reasons Al Pikabala. You get extra Berachot. There's the, all the reasons are in place in order to say Chazarat Ashatz. And uh, it seems to be there was a Machlok at what happened because Rabbi Baruch Taladano is saying that he saw in most cities that they did do Chazara and some say not that way. So that was a fascinating, explosive diun that they had. The rest of the Sefer talks about some contemporary issues like using a timer on Shabbat. Shutting off electricity on Yom Tov, which was a very big debate. The, using an Eruv on Shabbat, which he debated with Rabbi Yosef Misas, his contemporary, who was very lenient in Eruv, and he, he, uh, he, he, uh, he, he hit back hard. He talks about uh, uh, um, conversions that happen for the sake of, of, uh, of marriage. What's with that? So all of these are fascinating diunim, and I... I, I uh, I suggest everyone to get a copy of Shilot to Chuvot of Rabbi Baruch Tuledano, put out by Machon Avat Shalom. That's Rav Yaakov Hillel's Machon. Everyone should have a wonderful day. Chazak Baruch.